Okay, it's day 127 of this honeydew germination experiment. So as you can see, there's further growth. And these leaves on the perimeter near the shoot apical meristems, all three of which are pointing this way towards the sun now, due to the absence of the reflectors and manipulation by me to spin these vines and guide them uh, in a growth pattern that's kind of like a vortex going clockwise. Uh, these leaves are a lot bigger now and the marrow stems are yet longer again. So the foliage looks very healthy and there are only those two dead leaves that still have healthy stems so I'm not going to pull them. Essentially, you know, I can't really see any problems. Um, let me see. It's kind of white there. I don't know if that was due to the reflectors or what, you know, sun damage spots. Uh, if you look down there, there's actually a leaf on the sand. It's sort of dying. Um, maybe that's just the plant's response. Um, if you look at my sweet potato video, basically that's a vine. And if you bury the leaves that are near the ground level up to their necks in uh, dirt or sand, basically then they start dying. So I think that might be what's going on here. So this is the shoot apical meristem of plant one. It has the thickest stem, which makes it easy to identify. And then this is of vine number two. And this is the shoot apical meristem of vine number three. So it's kind of hidden between these two leaves, like right there. So a lot of that leaf wrinkling has just gone away on its own with sufficient watering and leaf growth. So, um, you know, these leaves are probably undersized when they were starved of water before or just dehydrated and thus that caused the wrinkles. But, you know, for all the new leaves, that's not a problem. Uh, this leaf is interesting because it's so convex. But yeah, if you look at this leaf, on vine number one, it's wrinkled because back then all the leaves were dehydrated. If you go back further, they all have those sort of wrinkle patterns. But if you go, you know, downstream, uh, this leaf is beautiful. It's perfect. You know, this one is too. And so is this one. So, in terms of time, you can say, you know, it's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, probably nine leaves ago. Take a closer look at the shoot apical meristem. It's just a fuzzy mess. I can't even tell what's going on in there, really. As a final observation, there's plenty of condensation in these plastic spore columns. Okay, it's day 128 of this honeydew germination experiment. I was just going to do a quick update for the yellow onion, but I found this honeybee, perhaps a European honeybee, just kind of dawdling around in my honeydew pot. So I'm going to see if it's trying to do something. It could just be a female worker on its last legs and about to die. So there are no flowers here and there's nothing to pollinate and you know I just don't understand what this bee is trying to do. I don't think it's a queen trying to establish a nest but it just seems to be tugging at that dead tendril. I think it's just trying to get its way out. It's day 133 of this honeydew germination experiment. So just visually I can tell that the leaves all look a little bit bigger, more robust. 
So as you can see, um, there seems to be a trend where these leaves that are touching the sand or the soil, the edges just become frayed and die. And I think that might just be in the genetic program of these leaves. You know, if something is being pressed against ground or in a bad spot, it just dies. And the same applies over here to this leaf. So here's the shoot ape colmera stem of vine number one. At first, nothing really seems to be special, but if you'll notice here, you'll see what resembles a small flower bud, actually. So let me get another angle on that. Yeah, so that is what I believe to be a flower bud. And at the second petiole stem juncture, you can see another one of those structures. So here's a look from another angle, and it's definitely not just another leaf or tendril. So that's wonderful news. Um, these are a lot smaller than I expected to be. I mean the plants as a whole. And that's probably because of all the trauma they've been through. So I'm kind of wondering will I get mini honeydews or whatnot. But good news is if bees don't come onto this balcony on the third floor, I'm just going to carry these pots, um, well this pot outside, and see if bees will come. Then I can get these pollinated and Hopefully within a month or two we can see fruits start to grow. If we look at the third node going back to the root system, this looks like it could be a flower as well. And the fourth node, that looks like a flower in the making. And that looks like a flowering structure in the making as well on the fifth node. And at the sixth node, that looks like a flower. At the seventh node, we have another flower developing. And at the eighth node, pretty soon we're going to have yellow flowers to complement this foliage. And it's going to be a beautiful sight. I'm very excited for the fruiting possibilities. If we look at vine number two, I can see some flowering structures. They're not very big yet. And nodes one and three. Um, nothing is as pronounced as it is in vine number one. So this is just behind schedule and development. So let's talk about vine number three. This is where it regenerated. It's got these leaves sticking out. Uh, still got that that leaf, um, you know, it's kind of hard to see from this angle and hold the camera at the same time, but you know, it basically came up here. Uh, that's a leaf that belongs to it, and it came out here. So we're touching that, and the main stem is here. And this is where it ends, and this is very interesting because. You know, what's so interesting about this node is that there are three leaves coming out from the same point. And here you have the shoot apical mirror stem extending. So this development is really atypical to what we're seeing in all the other ones. For example, if you go to vine 1, this is how the development has always been. You know, there's an alternation. And the stem kind of uh, zigs and zags gently. But you'll have tendrils and whatnot. Um, there's not any, there are no tendrils so far for vine number three. There's just uh, this development. Um, I don't know if it's on a more advanced biological clock, you know, trying to catch up or something. But anyway, this is very, very odd. Um, I don't know when this one is going to flower. It's probably going to be behind schedule. But. Considering all these seeds were germinated or attempted to be germinated at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if vine number three fought its way to try to flower very soon. Because if this is off schedule, if everything's off schedule, then they can't cross pollinate or be cross pollinated by bees or other pollinators like flies. 
So there you have it. You know, I thought this vegetative growth was going to go on for many weeks or even months until we saw flowers and fruits because I don't think these vines are very big at all due to many of the mistakes that I've made that nearly killed them. Um, so this is an exciting development. I think we're going to have fruit soon and these will get slightly longer and extend even further outside of the pot, but I could always just temporarily kind of corral them back inside in a clockwise pattern, uh, go out and get these pollinated, and then bring them back to this balcony. But that's a lot more work um, than just seeing if pollinators will come to this balcony. And I'm not really sure that they will, uh, but you know, then again, I wouldn't be surprised if hummingbirds or bees actually do come here. So we'll see what happens. So I don't know if I talked about this, but the bee that was in there last time trying to get out on its last leg, so to speak, it really was on its last legs and it died. So I threw away the corpse the next day. And this pot is okay, but I think the sweet potato, due to not being covered in sand and as fresher soil and the history of having rotting potatoes in that soil has a lot more fungus and add some. But I think there are a few living in this water tray still as well so I'm going to spray some more insecticide and water again. Okay it's day 134 of this honeydew germination experiment and I have wonderful news that uh, we have our first flower. So it's right over here at the end and I thought you know maybe I should just do a leaf count so people will have some kind of frame of reference as to how many leaves a vine needs to grow before it can start flowering. So I didn't expect this to happen so soon. Yesterday it was just you no know, flower bud and it was shorter. So these kind of have you know five lobes and they form these little cups you know sort of like buttercups and I don't know if any bees tried to come here today but I imagine that won't happen unless there's a pretty high concentration of flowers to make it worth their while. Okay, I realize this is going to be a quite the onerous task. Um, it begins here for vine number one. So, two cotyledons, that's two. We'll start counting, only true leaves. Um, you know, one broke off there, so that's one. Uh, two is broken off as well. Um, three is broken off. You can kind of see it like right there. And I think that's four right here. This is five. So six is that one trapped underneath. Um, here's number seven. And this is number eight. Um, this is number nine. This leaf here is number 10. Uh, a lot of these are just in bad positions. I'm going to try to help them a little bit, but you know, they're destined to kind of crumble away and die just because they're pressed against the ground. Um, this is 11. This is 12, I think. This is 13, and I know it's getting dark. Um, the sun's going down, it's past 7.30 here, Pacific time. 14. Now this huge leaf here is 15. Oh, kind of broke there. Um, yeah, it's kind of brittle and unhealthy because it's so space constricted, so I might have just caused that. I heard a pop. Hmm. I think this is 16. Uh, 
This is 17, another giant leaf. This is 18. These are so big. 19. 20 is this huge leaf right here. 21. 22. 23. These are all just huge. And this is 24. Um, some of these kind of have like a white speck on the edges. Not sure what that is. Uh, 25. This is 26. 27. 28. 29. And that's all I'm going to count. I know there's another leaf here. Well, you can count that as 30. And then there's a bunch of maybe four on the shoot ape Colmaris stem or even more. Who knows how small they are at this point. So let's just say 30 true leaves and then you start getting flowers. You've already seen this footage. This is footage of that one bee that landed in my pot and tried to escape but couldn't and died in this very spot. So I tossed away its body afterwards but in later video clips in this very video I was making comments to the effect of you know I don't think pollinators can make it here or will see these flowers and in retrospect that's definitely wrong I mean this bee made it here but then I was wondering you know is this just one of those delirious end-of-the-line bees that find some uh, random place to die in you know it could have just flew here and ran out of energy and landed on my balcony and died so there were no flowers at this point but I'm still very optimistic that pollinators can come here and will just because this one bee showed up.